Hi everyone, welcome again to our new session of the EWS. In this session, I will explain you about EWS EMR, that is Elastic Mapper Radius. So before starting with this session, let me present the agenda of today's session or what you will get it from this session. So first we will discuss about what is EWS EMR. Second, the benefits of EWS EMR, their use cases and I will show you the one case study here. At the end, I will show you practical demo, how we will create it and use in our real life. So if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing and pressing bell icon for more updates. Let's begin with EWS EMR. So first of all, what is EWS EMR? Amazon EMR is the industry leading cloud big data platform for processing vast amounts of data using open source tools such as Apache Spark, Apache Hive, Apache HBase, Apache Flink, Apache Hoodie and Presto. With AMR, we can run petabyte scale analysis at less than half of the cost. So it means of traditional on-premises solution in over 3 years faster than standard Apache Spark. For short running jobs, we can spin up and spin down cluster and keep per second for the instances used. It means this will save our cost as well. However, we are, how much we are using, we are paying for save. For long running workloads, we can create highly available clusters that automatically scale to meet demand. If we have existing on-premises deployments of open source tools such as Apache Spark and Apache Hive, we can also run EMR cluster on EWF outpost. So let's understand the benefits of using EMR. So first is simple to use. So analysts, data engineers and data scientists can use EMR notebooks allowing individuals and teams to easily collaborate and interactively explore, process and visualize data. We can simply specify the version of EMR applications and type of compute we want to use. EMR takes care of provisioning, configuring and tuning cluster so that we can focus on running analytics. Second is less cost. So EMR pricing is simple and predictable. We pay a per instance rate of every second used with a 1 minute minimum charge. We can launch a 10 node EMR cluster for a little as $0.15 per hour. We can also save 50 to 80 percent of the cost of instances by selecting Amazon EC2 spot for transient workloads and reserve instances for long running workloads. We can also use saving plans. Third is elastic. Unlike the rigid infrastructure of on premises clusters, EMR decouples compute and storage, giving us the ability to scale each independently and take advantage of tiered storage of Amazon S3, that is, simple storage services. With EMR, we can provision 100 or thousands of compute instances to process data at any scale. The number of instances can be increased or decreased automatically using auto scaling and we need to pay for what we use. Fourth is reliable, spend less time tuning and monitoring our cluster. EMR is tuned for the cloud and constantly monitors our cluster. Retrying field tasks and automatically replacing poorly performing instances with multiple master nodes. Clusters are highly available and automatically fail over in the event of a node failure. EMR provides the latest stable open source software releases so we don't have to manage updates and bug fixes which leads to fewer issues and less effort to maintain the environment. Fifth is secure. So EMR automatically 
configure EC2 firewalls, settings controlling network access to instances, and launches cluster in an Amazon virtual private cloud. Server side encryption or client side encryption can be used with the AWS key management services or your own customer managed key. AMR makes it easy to enable other encryption options like in transit and address encryption and strong authentication with Kerberos. We can use AWS Lake Formation or Apache Ranger to apply fine gained data access control for databases, tables, and columns. Finally, last one or that is sixth number is flexible. We have complete control over a cluster and root access to every instances we can launch EMR cluster with customer custom Amazon Linux EMI and easily install additional applications with bootstrap actions. EMR enables us to reconfigure application on running cluster on the fly without the need of relaunch cluster. Additionally using Hadoop 3.0 we can package lib library dependency in Docker containers and submit them with our job to simplify environment dependency. Now let's understand the use cases where we can use it and where it is exactly right now using by the organization. Machine learning. So EMR builds in machine learning tools including Apache Spark, M Library and TensorFlow and Apache M MXNet for scalable machine learning algorithm and use custom EMI and bootstrap actions easily add our preferred libraries and tools to create our own predictive analytics tool set. Second is extract transformation load that is ETL. EMR can be used to quickly and cost effectively perform data transformation workloads such as short, aggregate and join on large data sets. Third is Clickstream analysis. Analyze clickstream data from Amazon S3 using Apache Spark and Apache Hive to segment users, understand user preferences, and deliver more effective ads. Fourth is real time streaming. Analyze events from Apache Kafka, Amazon Kinesis, or other streaming data sources in real time with Apache Spark streaming and Apache Flink to create long-running, highly available and fault-tolerant streaming data pipelines on EMR. So basically, fault-tolerant will work as a whenever there is an issue occur, it will try to sort out from their end, otherwise it will throw an error. So persistence transform data sets to S3 or HDFS and insights to Amazon Elastic Search Service. Next is interactive analytics. So EMR Notebook provides a managed analytics environment based on open source Jupyter that allows data scientists, analysts and developers to prepare and visualize data, collaborate with peers, build application and perform interactive analysis. Genomics. So EMR can be used to access vast amounts of genomics data and other large scientific data sets quickly and efficiently. Researchers can access genomic data hosted for free on AWS. Let's understand the case study above. So there are several case studies are available on online. You can refer it but here I am going to take about NASDAQ. FINRA is also a big and it is used by several other organizations. So we are keeping case study of only NASDAQ here. So let me explain you about case study of NASDAQ. The NASDAQ group of companies operates financial actions around the world and process large volume of data every day. We run a wide variety of analytics and surveillance system, all of which require to access to essentially the same data sets. NASDAQ group has been a user of Amazon Redshift since it was released and they are extremely happy with it. They have discussed with AWS reInvent several times, the most recent of which was 
Fail 401 Seismic Shift Nasdaq Migration to Amazon Restrict Currently, they are using or averaging of 5.5 billion so into Amazon Restrict every day. 14 billion on a peak day in October 2014. In addition to Amazon Restrict Data Warehouse, they have a large historical data for trends that would be like access as a single gigantic data set. Currently, this historical archive is spread across a large number of desperate systems making it difficult to use. Their aim for a new unified warehouse platform is to fold increase the accessibility of the historic data set to growing number of internal groups at Nasdaq and to gain cost efficiency in the process. So why Amazon S3 and Amazon EMR was introduced in Nasdaq, a major architectural tenant of their new warehouse platform is the separation of storage and computer resources. In traditional Hadoop, Hadoop deployments, scaling storage capacities typically requires scaling compute capacity and any changes to the ratio of compute to storage involves modifying hardware. In that case of long term historical archives data that is not accessed frequently in HDFS would still require always on attached compute and resources on each node in the cluster. Additionally, the default replication factor for HDFS is 3 meaning that every block of data is present on 3 nodes in the cluster. This provides some level of durability but it means they must by three times of amount of this needed when expanding storage capacity on their cluster. It also introduces hotspots if a given piece of data is present on only three nodes in their cluster but is accessed every frequently, they must either duplicate it or deal with certain compute nodes becoming hotspots. Then they can avoid this problem by using Amazon S3 and Amazon EMR allowing, allowing them to separate compute and storage for their data warehouses. Launching cluster with EMR is basically EMR makes it easy to deploy and manage Hadoop cluster. They can grow and shrink cluster as needed and shut them down over weekends or holidays whenever they are not looking to use for the further. On security perspective also, Amazon EMR is very much encrypted content so that it will provide additional security level to the NASDAQ. Whenever they are using as a custom encryption material provider, they are always going with AWS CLI by specifying the following arguments when creating a cluster like EMRF encryption client site, provide type custom then custom provider location is S3 and the URL. Data ingest workflow is also very much easy for them and approximately 30,000 operations each day and use MySQL as a persistent store for state information. Most of those operations execute multiple steps with the following general pattern like retrieving data from another system via JDBC, SMB, FTP, SFTP, etc. Second is validate data for syntax and correctness to ensure that the schema hasn't changed, that they are they aren't missing data, etc. Third is convert the data into Parquet or ORC file, and fourth is upload files to S3 using S3 client side encryption. So that's all about the case study. Let's see how we'll create it in um, Amazon login. So once you log in, you're able to see services. From services option, you can search EMR and you are able to get managed Hadoop framework that is EMR available here. Create a cluster. Uh, so for creating a cluster, you just have to click on create, enter the detail, my cluster and uh, it is deploying into S3. So if you have already uh, created your ERC S3, then it is well and good. It will directly uh, deploy it to over the S3 folder. Otherwise, you have to create the detail. 
with the release option uh, select the latest one that is EMR 6.20 uh, and the core component you can also use the HBs, Phonics and Meta Store and Meta Store so there are several options that are available uh, for the uh, application cost paper like which application you are using Core Hadoop or HBase or Presto or uh, Presto SQL uh, or the Spark so better you can go ahead with the core otherwise you can use AWS Blue Data Catalog for table metadata then instance type you have to provide your instance type which instance type you are looking for and uh, security in access so whenever you are looking for uh, security access kind of create your uh, EC2 key pair so right now I don't have EC2 uh, here so whenever you are creating EC2 instance it will directly enter the key pair here at the time of creating EC2 instance so once your EC2 instance is available you have to select uh, that EC2 instance and you will get the key pair from here so right now EC2 is not available because of that it's not showing for me so EMR role create your default role or you can uh, select the customized role for you as well so after initializing all the data just click on create cluster it will create a cluster for you and you can use it in OT as well so once you create that it will uh, create with the detail and in the detail section you will get the OT access link and from OT let me show you so now you can see here uh, once you will uh, go to SSH uh, or the session so uh, after creating that uh, EMR you will get one URL copy that URL and paste it to host name or IP address once you will enter that select the SSH and from SSH uh, select auth when you will select auth keep this fields as it is by default and select the key pair from here so once you will select the key from uh, key pair and click on open it will launch a SSH screen from there the EMR contain will start loading once loading will start it will take some time for you uh, at the time of creation so wait till your EMR is created once it is created you can launch the putty and start using the EMR services so this is all how we can create the EMR and use it in putty so that's all about the EMR let's recap the contain so we started with the basic of EMR then we move to the benefits then third point we have discussed about their use cases fourth is case study and finally fifth point we have created practically and used in putty so this is all about AWS EMR hope you liked it if you really enjoyed this video consider subscribing and pressing bell icon for more updates thank you for watching